we used to live in a country where you could easily escape politics. If you didn't want to hear about politics, which I believe the majority of people don't, all you had to do was not watch cable news or not listen to talk radio. If you stayed away from those things, you could live a politic-free life. It used to be, and might still be in some workplaces, I don't work in an office anymore, so I don't know, but it used to be forbidden to speak about politics in the workplace. Due to the rise of the woke agenda last year, everything has become political. I mean everything. You go to church on a Sunday morning, there's a good chance at some point your pastor's going to bring up politics. The Kobe vaccine has become political. The damn mask have become political. If you refuse to wear a mask, you must be a supporter of Donald Trump. If you choose to wear a mask, you must be a supporter of Joe Biden. Uh, no. No. If I don't wear a mask, maybe it's because I like to breathe. And if I do wear a mask, maybe it's because I'm being cautious of the COVID. Did you ever think about that? We all know sports have become politicized. I bring up all of these examples because recently, mainly due to the Olympics, something has become politicized that should never be. All of the things I mentioned should have never become political. But what I am about to talk about definitely should remain apolitical. Have you guys ever heard of William Roden? I believe he might go by Billy Roden, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I'd heard the name before, but I wasn't real familiar with him until I was doing research for this story. David Rutz over at Fox News posted an article about him last night. William Roden worked for the New York Times. He published a book back in 2006 titled $40 Million Slaves, The Rise, Fall, and Redemption of the Black Athlete. $40 million slave. Have you ever met a millionaire slave? Hell, have you ever met a slave, period, in your lifetime? I haven't. That should tell you all you need to know about William Roden. If you weren't convinced he was woke by that, he works for the undefeated, the wokest of the woke. The undefeated is owned by ESPN. It's one of the wings of the ultimate propaganda machine. If you've never had the pleasure of visiting the undefeated, I strongly suggest you stay away for your own sanity. William Roden has covered the Olympics throughout his career. Dude's like 70, 80 years old. He probably has a wealth of knowledge and experience that could be used in a positive way. Instead, he decides to jump aboard the woke train and promote propaganda. He was a guest on CBS This Morning. And here is what he had to say about covering the Tokyo Olympics. Quote, I love the opening ceremonies, march of countries. Then I realized, you know, man, particularly after these last four years, I had it wrong. Nationalism is not good. We've seen the rise of white nationalism. Nationalism is not good. And also this whole idea. I keep thinking back on the Capitol riots. And I saw a lot of, you know, U.S. flags, end quote. We're going to stop it right there for a second. A couple of things here. One, you can tell in the first couple of sentences that his entire premise is based on his hatred of Donald Trump, particularly after these last four years. So this man expects me to believe that his entire opinion of America changed when Donald Trump was elected. As you guys know, I wasn't a fan of Donald Trump, but his election didn't change my perception of my country. It didn't change William Roden's either. That's just a common tactic wokers use to promote their agenda. Blame Donald Trump. And two, he's trying to convince you that nationalism is not good and tries to tie nationalism into white supremacy. Again, another common tactic by the wokers. They tie race into their agenda to stoke your emotion. And because they know the misguided and the uninformed will listen and believe them if they say something is racist. One of the few things I did like about Donald Trump was that he was a nationalist. He promoted an America first agenda, which is rare with modern politicians. The far left in this country is promoting globalism, the collective, 
We've talked about this before. One of the many problems with a collectivist mentality, it's designed to denigrate the individual. For example, you are no longer allowed to make personal choices when it comes to your health, like the COVID vaccine. Just this morning, Bill de Blasio, mayor of New York City, was on MSNBC pushing mandates in New York for the vaccine. We're just looking out for your health, but also looking out for the health of everyone else. We have to be safe. That is an example of a collective mentality, a globalist mentality. Let's continue with William Roden's nice little soliloquy, where he explains why the American flag is just so damn offensive to him. Quote, and also, this whole idea, I keep thinking back on the Capitol riots, and I saw a lot of, you know, U.S. flags. So now when I see the flag and the flag raised, what, what America am I living in? You know, are the ones that don't think, you know, we should be here, end quote. I actually happen to agree with William Roden here, but not like you think. Sometimes I sit back and wonder, what America am I living in? Because there seems to be a serious lack of third grade level education in modern America. So you mean to tell me, because of the Capitol riots, the American flag is now a symbol of racism? What kind of sense does that make? He also alludes to the fact that the riots somehow prove African Americans are not wanted here in America. He goes on to talk about the struggles of Team USA in basketball. Now, as you guys know, Team USA has been an unmitigated disaster under Greg Popovich. According to old Billy Roden, though, this is fantastic news. I think we should be humbled. Last year showed us the entire country needs to be humbled because of their entitlement and their privilege. Nobody epitomizes that more than basketball. Well, he's damn right about one thing. Basketball is the epitome of entitlement and privilege. You want to find the most entitled and privileged people in America? Look no further than players in the NBA. Now, of course, LeBron James wouldn't agree with that statement. You know, LeBron struggles. He's afraid to walk out the front door of his mansion the size of a third world country because a white cop is sitting there waiting to take his life. Last year did not show America was entitled and privileged. We are privileged here in America, but last year did not show that we were entitled. You want to know what last year really showed? It showed that there are a lot of deranged people living among us who throw tantrums in the street and burn buildings in their own neighborhoods all in the name of social justice. That's what it showed. William Roden is another example of someone in the woke media promoting toxicity and propaganda. He started the Roden Fellows a few years ago. If you're a young college student and you're interested in being brainwashed, I encourage you to apply for it. The Roden Fellowship is dedicated to diversity and inclusion in journalism. The program is so diverse. Guess how many white students were chosen this year? Guess how many Latino students were chosen? Guess how many Asian students were chosen. Yeah. Zero. In the interest of transparency, the program's only offered to black students. Now that alone contradicts everything about diversity and inclusion. You could argue the program is about anti-diversity and exclusion, since only one race is allowed to participate. But I digress. Enough about Billy Roden. Let me know what you think of him and his ridiculous claims about the American flag. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.